Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In today's video, we're gonna do a 10 in 10, which means I'm gonna to try to answer 10 questions that people ask on my website in 10 minutes or less. And I'm gonna to try to make this an, an every week version on Fridays. So tune in on Fridays to get 10 questions answered in 10 minutes or less. Now, if you don't know me, if this is the first time watching me on my videos, I own Days Concrete Floors Incorporated. And I also own this website, everythingaboutconcrete.com. Now, I specialize in pouring concrete flat work. So I've done concrete floors and slabs and stamp concrete, uh, concrete repair, sidewalks, pool decks, all kinds of stuff like that since the 1980s, so well over 30 years. Concrete's my specialty, so that's what we're talking about here. Let's get right to it. Ten minutes or less. The first question, when making a concrete patio can you lay concrete in sections well definitely yes you can do them in 10 sections one section five sections however many you want depending on how big your patio is um, when we install concrete patios we generally like to pour the patio in one section if we can and then we'll saw our expansion joints in it to break it up into different sections but if you do want to do it in different sections Let's say you have a 10 by 10 patio and you want to do it in two pieces. You're going to want to drill and pin those two sections together. So you pour one section, let it get hard, drill some holes in the edge of it, drive in some rebar, and then when you pour the other section, those two sections will be pinned together. That way, if one section wants to settle or heave, one won't lift up higher than the other. Question number two, how long after I pour a concrete slab can I glue down VCT tile? Well, I don't do VCT tile, but one thing I know about concrete is it takes about 30 days for it to cure properly, for most of the moisture to come out of the slab and for it to be dry. So if you check with the VCT manufacturer's specs, I'm sure they're probably going to want to say the concrete needs to be fully cured. And what that means is 28 days to 30 days or more before you put down any VCT tile. Next question. I need to pour a slab for an industrial oven that reaches a maximum temperature of 550 degrees. What type of concrete mix should I use? Well, that's a good question. Now, regular concrete when exposed to high heat, let's say 212 degrees or higher. 212 degrees is the boiling point of water. So if concrete's exposed to a heat that high, any moisture in the concrete will turn to steam. And when it turns to steam, it's going to want to pop that concrete and almost kind of make it explode. So you got to be careful with just a regular concrete mix around uh, high temperatures. Now, the aggregate plays an important part of this. So Regular concrete aggregate doesn't want to be exposed to high heat, like 212 degrees or more. But a limestone aggregate has a lot better fire resistance when it's exposed to uh, low temperature fire. Uh, another aggregate is a lightweight type aggregate, kind of like a volcanic rock that has all kinds of little holes in it. That performs really well for high heat concrete. And, you know, maybe a 4,000 PSI mix with a lightweight concrete aggregate will give you some pretty good heat, high heat resistance. At even higher temperatures, let's say 500 degrees or above or 800 degrees or above, high heat resistant concrete's, you know, always needed. So you want the lightweight aggregate and you also want um, something called calcium aluminate cement. This is different than your regular Portland cement. And that'll help you produce a really nice fire resistant concrete. So look, that's not my expertise, but that's a little bit I know about that. You're gonna to wanna to dive deeper into that. Um, and you can, you can uh, search for high heat resistant concrete recipes right on Google. You can find some right on there. Next question, what is a good air entrainment agent for a driveway? Well. When we pour concrete driveways or any exterior concrete here in Maine, you know, we're exposed to a lot of freeze-thaw cycles. 
So all our exterior concrete has air entrainment in it. And what this does is the air entrainment produces tiny microscopic air bubbles in the concrete mix after it's dried. And that allows water to be absorbed into the concrete and freeze and expand without popping the concrete. So it, gives, it just gives the concrete room for the moisture to get into there and expand without deteriorating or spalling it. So there's a lot of companies that sell air entrainment. Uh, one of them is BASF. They have a air entrainment called Master Air AE90. And a lot of the concrete companies probably use this. There's other ones out there. Now, if you're just pouring like small patio blocks and you're buying your own concrete and you want some air entrainment in it, there's another company called Acona, which is A-K-O-N-A. -A. And I'll have a link for this company right down in the description. You can get this right on Amazon. It just comes in a quart bottle. It's a liquid. You can mix it right in the concrete mix as you're mixing it up. So you could use that for your own little projects. Next question. Should concrete for an air and train driveway be 6% air? Well, the, the easy question for that is yes. Air entrainment should be between 4 to 6% for your, your ready mix concrete mixes. That's what you're looking for. Next question. What is a good way to test concrete before pouring it to see if the air entrainment is correct? Well, there's a standard test for air entrainment using an air content meter. And we have to do this on quite a bit of our commercial jobs. So we'll call up a testing company that tests for concrete. They'll show up on the job with their, with their meter and they'll, they'll put the concrete inside this meter and they'll test it for the air content. Um, and that's what I would suggest doing is if you want that done, just calling somebody up, paying for them to test it, and then they can tell you right there on the spot. It takes, about, it takes them about five minutes to do this test. Next question, and this question comes from Kat in Stony Point, New York. She says, hi y'all, any input would be appreciated. My home is older, built in the 1930s, and I've decided it's time to paint my unfinished basement walls and floor. Into my project, I noticed that if I tapped on the floor in a couple places, it sounded hollow compared to the areas surrounding it. There aren't any cracks in the surface, so my concern is, if this is a hollow space, and if so, what needs to be done to correct it? Well, Kat, honestly, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So what I mean by that is, if it's not already cracked, there's really no way we can fix it without breaking into it and patching it. So I would just go ahead and paint the floor, and if later on something happens, then you know we can break that hollow spot out fill it in with a concrete patch material, and then you can repaint back over it. But in the meantime, if it hasn't broke since the 1930s, I wouldn't be too concerned on it right now. Next question. We've only been in our new home for 60 days, and already the concrete has cracks, holes, and crumbling at the seams. Is this normal? Well, the easy answer to that is no, that's not normal. So something probably happened during the mix of the concrete when the company was pouring the concrete floor. Whether it got poured too wet or the concrete didn't reach its strength, you know, I, I don't know. There could be a bunch of variables there, but the easy question for that is no, that's not normal. I would, I would research into that a little further. Uh, next question is from John in Hicksville, New York. I just bought a home built in 1959 that has an existing cellar window in a well uh, approximately two feet below grade. The property is pitched towards the window and during heavy rain I get water in my cellar. It would be cheaper and easier to just remove the existing window well, fill it up with concrete, waterproof the exterior, and backfill and grade the new soil up against the new foundation wall. The question is what concrete should I buy to fill up this window? And can I buy these bags at Home Depot or make my mix that has that has a better that's better suited for this? Well, you're going to want to get a mix that's non-shrinkage, so some type of hydraulic type concrete that is, uh, or or add some type of shrinkage compensating mixture into the concrete. But 
you're definitely going to want to get one that doesn't shrink so you have no seams around the outside edge when you're done and then I'm sure you'd probably put something like ice and water shield over the outside of it to help waterproof it and maybe even a waterproofing type paint over the outside of it um, that's what I would do next question is from Brendan in St. Paul Minnesota I'm building a 12 by 16 shed on a floating slab and I want one course of block to keep the framing above grade. I'm wondering if there's a general pricing for supplying and installing foundation block. Well, Brendan, unfortunately I don't do concrete block, so I, I can't really help you there, but I do do concrete little stub walls or knee walls for slabs like this. That, that could be eight inches high, they could be 12 inches high. And generally when I'm doing a uh, concrete knee wall for something like this, I charge about $25 a lineal foot to form it. The, that includes the concrete, the rebar I put in there, and to place the concrete, then come back and strip the forms. So for a concrete knee wall, it would be about $25 a lineal foot for something like that. And our last question is Charlie in Erie, Pennsylvania. He says, in, in early June, I had a couple a concrete patio and sidewalk installed. Almost immediately, several dark spots showed up near the center of the patio. The contractor said they would go away in time. After several months, the area got some dirt and green mold on it, so I pressure washed the surface. Now, each of the dark spots opened up a crater, and the installer contacted the concrete company, and they said it's common and called it burps. Now, I've never heard of that. They said to blow out each area with the pressure washer and fill them in with a patching material. Does this make sense and will it be durable? We live in a harsh winter climate. Well, it doesn't really make sense. Now, it could be a couple of things. The dark spots make me think of one thing. Sometimes when we put calcium chloride, flake calcium chloride, in, we dump it in the concrete truck. And that we use that to help accelerate the mix of the concrete, help it dry a little faster in the winter. Sometimes when we put those bags of calcium in there, there's some chunks in there, and some of them could be the size of a quarter, some of them could be the size of uh, your fist, or in between. Um, and what happens is if those chunks don't get taken out before they get mixed in, if they get poured into your slab or your patio, they do leave the concrete darker in there, and they do end up disintegrating over time which would leave a, a hollow spot or a crater so that's the first thing that came to my mind when I read your question so that's probably that's what I'm thinking it probably is and another thing it could be sometimes we get small pieces of wood or chunks of leaves or branches in the mix and it, it could have been something like that too but uh, Yes, you're going to have to patch it. If it's done well with a good patch material then and then seal it with a concrete sealer, you're probably going to be fine. Well, that's it, guys. That's the 10 questions in 10 minutes or less. I think I went a little bit over, maybe closer to 13 minutes. But uh, thanks again for watching. And check down in the description for any links. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.